Let's talk about PCR, VNTR, and the human genome. So what is the relationship between gene number, genome size, and organismal complexity? Well, first of all, there's no correlation at all. The number of genes does not equal a larger genome. So for example, if this is our human DNA genome, and if this is our entire genome of a worm, then both of them might have the same number of genes. But because genomes are more than just genes, the human DNA might have some introns and transposones that are not protein coding. As a result, even though the worm has the same number of genes as a human, the size of the genomes are different. The genome of a worm is shorter because it has less introns. And a human DNA genome is much longer because it has other non-coding regions. Also, the number of genes does not equal complexity. So clearly, both humans and worms have about the same number of genes, but a worm is much less complex than a human. So again, there's no correlation between gene number and complexity. And finally, in the same way, genome size does not equal complexity. Let's now talk about PCR. So PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. And we can use PCR to amplify a target sequence of DNA. So that means that we can make numerous copies of a certain segment of DNA. And this does not occur in the human body. It only happens in the lab. So this is going to be very helpful in DNA fingerprinting. The components that we need to do PCR are DNA sample, DNA primers, DNTPs, which stand for nucleoside triphosphates, and there are our four bases. TAC polymerase, which is a DNA polymerase that works at high temperatures. And we'll talk about why we need a polymerase that functions at high temperatures. We also need a PCR tube with our primers, DNTPs, DNA polymerase, and DNA target sequence, and then a buffer that will help us create optimal conditions. Let's now discuss the three steps of PCR. So the first step is denaturation. In this step, we have our DNA duplex and we will heat the DNA to briefly separate the strands. So each strand will become a template. In the second step, which is called annealing, we will cool down our DNA so that our primers form hydrogen bonds with the three prime ends of the target sequence. And remember that we're using DNA primers, not RNA primers. So here I wrote RNA primers, but I should have written DNA primers. In PCR, we use DNA. And in our third step called extension, our tag polymerase will add nucleotides to the three prime end of each primer. So here we have our DNA primers and TAC polymerase will add or elongate the DNA strand and read the template from three to five, but synthesize from five prime to three prime. We will then repeat this cycle multiple times.
So what is the difference between PCR and DNA replication? We have similarities and differences. So one similarity is that DNA polymerase adds bases to both the DNA during replication and PCR. It synthesizes the DNA from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. One difference is that in DNA replication, we use RNA primers, while in PCR, we use DNA primers. In DNA replication, we also use helicase to open the strands, but in PCR, we will heat the DNA in order to denature it. And finally, in DNA replication, the purpose is to copy the entire DNA, but in PCR, we only want to copy a target sequence. So what is VNTR? Well, VNTR stands for Variable Number Tandem Repeats, and these are repetitive DNA elements that can be used to identify an individual. So all individuals have these repeated sequences, but the number of times that the sequence is repeated is different for each individual. VNTRs tend to be 10 to 100 base pairs long, so they're longer than STRs, which are short tandem repeats. And VNTR is helpful in DNA fingerprinting. So in DNA fingerprinting, we're going to get DNA from multiple suspects at a crime scene, and we will then amplify the segment of DNA that we know all those suspects would have, which is the VNTR segments. So part of DNA fingerprinting involves looking at a gel electrophoresis, which will have the criminal's DNA and we need to find which suspect matches the criminal's DNA. So when we read this gel, the number of rows with different sizes of bands is an allele. This gel has five different alleles because each number of repeats is an allele. If a person has two bands, then they are considered heterozygous because they have two different alleles. But a person with one band is homozygous because they have the same allele from both parents. This method is not enough to prove that a person is guilty. You would have to do other tests as well, but it will tell us if a person is innocent because if even one of the alleles doesn't match, then the su suspect does not have the same DNA as the criminal at that one VNTR, so they are innocent. Looking at the gel on the left, we can tell that all individuals are innocent because none of them have two bands that match both of the bands of the criminal. On the right, suspect 2 is innocent, but suspect 1 could be guilty because for these two alleles, their DNA matches the criminal. In order to determine if they are actually guilty, more tests must be done. I hope this video helped you better understand polymerase chain reaction, variable tandem repeats, and genome size.